The main topic for today's video is social cognitive theory, which can be defined as a current view of learning and motivation that discusses dynamic interactions among many of the behavioral, personal, and environmental factors involved in learning and motivation. Within social cognitive theory, you can find the concept of observational learning, which occurs when an observer's behavior changes after viewing the behavior of a model. One key component of observational learning is called modeling. Modeling is an instructional strategy in which the teacher demonstrates a new concept or approach and students learn by observing. Now pay close attention to the following scene as we demonstrate these key terms. So I know we're all excited to go home after such a long day and fun day at school, but first we need to complete our agendas. This will help us make sure that we get everything done today and you will find these boxes where you can check off whatever you accomplished that day and make to make sure that everything you have in there is completed. So follow along with me and I'm going to model how to complete the agenda and you have to do the same thing on your papers. So we're going to write down the day for today. Today's Monday, September 1st. Our first step is to write down our first assignment. So can you remember what we have today for math? Liam. We have a worksheet, we need to do problems one through four. Awesome, let's write it down. So students, what is the thing we always have last in our agenda? Yes, Amanda. Um, we have our parents sign our agenda. Great job. Great job, girls. I like how you observed the modeling and were able to fill your agendas correctly. Have fun today and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Another key component of learning is reinforcement. There are many types of reinforcement, such as direct, vicarious, and self. Direct reinforcement is given after successful completion of a task. Now, let's return to our classroom and take a look at the next morning. Good morning, third graders. Now I'm going to check if you completed the task of having your parents sign your agenda. Good job, Amanda. Thanks, Miss Cecilia. Oh, awesome job, Lydia. Elbow. Oh, yes. Vicarious reinforcement increases the chances that we will repeat a behavior by observing another person being reinforced for that same behavior. Oh, thank you, Amanda, for keeping the class clean. Thank you, Lydia, for helping your classmate. Self-reinforcement is controlling your own reinforcers through intrinsic or extrinsic means. Extrinsic refers to behavior that is driven by external rewards, such as material objects, popularity, grades, or praise. Now I'm going to hand out your spelling test. You all did a great job. If you got over 90%, you're getting candy, so congratulations, Lydia. Intrinsic would be classified as doing an activity for its inherent satisfaction rather than for some separable consequence. Even though I didn't get a piece of candy like Lydia, I studied really hard and I'm still proud of the score I got. The last key component of learning is called self-efficacy. Self-efficacy refers to the beliefs that we hold about our own capabilities. There are four different sources that influence our self-efficacy. Number one, the way in which we interpret our own direct experiences as we work towards mastery. Number two, the vicarious experiences that we have through observing others. Number three, the messages or social persuasion that we receive from those around us. And number four, the physiological or emotional arousal that we experience during specific activities. In our final scenario, our students will be doing their math lesson. Math? Math makes me so happy. Yeah! To start our math lesson today, we're going to have a challenge. How do you feel about that? 
Yes, Amanda. I think I can do this. I did so well on my last test. Awesome. What about you, Lydia? I mean, it looks hard, but Amanda's confident, so I think I can do it. Wow, good job, Lydia. That problem was kind of hard. You did amazing. Thanks. 